You're right guys, 84 and 4 here, and welcome back to a brand new video on my channel. Now unfortunately, I haven't actually been able to say that in a while, because I have literally been gone for a month to Spain, had a really good time there. Didn't actually end up doing a vlog, just had my holiday as I was going to have it. And I apologies for that in case you want to see a vlog, but I'm going to be back with the uploads now, and this is where I need your help with. Now in the run-up to Fever 17, a lot of YouTubers find it very very difficult to produce quality content so I want your guys help on what videos I should do I already have a few stored up but I want your guys extra ideas on what I should do in the run up to FIFA 17. Now more about today's video Premier League predictions it is basically a video I do every year I did it last year and I'm pretty sure I got two people right like two teams right that was Stoke and Crystal Palace I'm pretty sure so I'm not very good at this but I'm going to give it a go again it's also always very hard to predict the Premier League but who would have predicted Leicester coming first last year I'm pretty sure no one would have but we're going to jump into it today and without any further ado let's get cracking so we're going to start off with 20th to 18th these are going to be the three teams I believe are going to get relegated now in 20th we are going to go with Sunderland they've already had a really bad start to the season and usually I wouldn't put them in the relegation zone because they're a team classically to stay up in the BPL, and now that Sam Allardyce has gone to bigger and better things, let's be honest, with the England job, um, Sunderland with their new coach, without Big Sam to keep them up, I can see them going down, they look like they have the weakest squad this season, not enough top quality signings from them, so I can see them going down. Now in 19th we've got Burnley, now they indeed didn't have the worst start to the season so far, of course I'm recording this on Friday afternoon, so match week 3 in the BPL where they're playing Chelsea, so Saturday's fixtures. I haven't seen them yet. Hopefully Chelsea beat Burnley, but enough about that. Burnley, they've had a decent start. They beat Liverpool, but I think that could have just been a one-off. They don't have the very good squad. I mean, Andre, um, Gray, and also, who's the other one? Vokes, I believe it is, up front. Can they, can they keep Burnley in the Premier League? That's the big question you've got to ask all Burnley fans. I'm not sure they can. And their goalkeeper, he's a decent one. Can he keep them in it? We'll have to wait and see. Is their defence that good? I don't think it is. I think Burnley are going to go down. Now in 18th place, and this is going to be a team that I think are just about going to go down into the Championship, and that's Bournemouth. Now, Bournemouth are a team who've actually made a hell of signings. Are they top quality ones? No. Like, Jordan Ibe was meant to be their best transfer. He's done nothing special in his career. I mean, people think he's a young, talented Englishman. How many times have we said that about a lot of English players? So I can't see them doing much this season. Again, I would say not enough signings, but they have made an absolute stack ton. So we'll see how Bournemouth do to be honest. They have really, really haven't had a good start for the season. But could they improve it? I'll have to wait and see. But in my opinion, I think they're going to go down as well. Now here we go into team 17th to 11. And starting off in 17th with Crystal Palace. Now after the departure of Yannick Balassi, I cannot see Pardew's side doing a lot this season. Of course, they have got decent talent. Bakri, Sacco, Zaha. Is it enough to really push them up to decent heights in the Premier League table? I don't think it is. They haven't had the best start. And of course, that major departure of Yannick Balassi. I think it's going to keep them very far on the table, so 17th for me is for Crystal Palace. Now, next up in 16th spot, we have got West Bromwich Albion. Now, West Bromwich Albion are a team who they always seem to nick little results. They got Rondon up front, who we know is a great goal scorer. God knows what Berahino is going to do to his crib. If he gets back in form, they could do decent things. But again, I'm going to have to put them in 16th. They're such an average BPL team. I can't see them climbing up the table, especially with some of the signings the teams above them have made. They haven't made enough top quality ones. And really, let's be honest, their squad isn't very good. Now, in 15th, we have got Hull City, the Tigers, the Legends. Everyone's loving Hull at the moment. They're the new Leicester boys. Not only did they beat Leicester, they went on to win their second game. And I can't remember who it was against now. Oh, well. But anyway, they've won both their games. They're sitting third in the BPL table. In Champions League sports, imagine if that happens. Imagine if they actually go on to a Leicester. I've got to put them 15th. It's realistic. And if I'm being honest, I think the whole City fans will be happy with that. They'll go into this season thinking, we don't have a lot of players in our squad. They're not top quality. We might go down here. We might even finish 20th, which I think a lot of people would have predicted. But after these two games that I've seen in the, in the BPL table, I think they're going to come 15th and not have a bad campaign. And in 14th, we've got Swansea City. Swansea City are another team who have made actually a decent amount of signings. I know they've got Llorente in. Unfortunately, they lost Andre AU to West Ham. But what can you do? AU's gone to West Ham. They have to think of new possibilities. They've got new signings in. But again, Swansea are a team that started off well at Brendan Rodgers. People thought they were going to do good things. And they've kind of dipped in form. So we've got to watch out for Swansea whether they do well or not this BPL season. Now in 13th, we have got Middlesbrough, the last of the promoted teams. I believe Middlesbrough are going to have a cracking season. They have made top, top quality signings. I mean, Negredo, Valdez, they've got Nugent in the club who are already bangs in goals. They've got Rose who bangs in goals. They're making signings all left, right and centre. Victor Fisher. These guys are going to do big things. I know they are. And 13th is a decent spot for them. 
They've got a win and a draw so far in the BPL, so 13th is a realistic spot for them right now. That's what I'm going to have to give middles for. I have faith in them. In win 12th, we've got Watford, and I may just add that Chelsea just beat them the other day 2-1, which I was buzzing about. I think that kind of proves Watford. They were 1-0 up in the 80th minute, and they let that slip. Their defence isn't that good. That's all it is to say about They have a lot of promise going up front. Capu's got 2-2. Two two. <clears throat> Sorry, Rose. Capu's got 2-2. Two two. Igalo's got... None, but he's still good. I mean, Agarlo, we know what he can do. He got tops last year. I love Agarlo as well, because he's just an awesome FIFA tops card that I actually tended to pack. Also, Troy Deeney, another quality player that will get goals for them. They have a lot going forward. Their defence, who's their best defender? Like, Prodal. He's not good enough to stop um, top quality BPL strikers. So I think 12th is a decent mid-table spot for Watford. In 11th, we have got Southampton. Southampton are another side that have not been doing too well this season. In fact, they've actually started off really far down it, but I think they'll eventually regain their form. Should come around 11th. Shane Long should be able to get enough goals for them to actually keep them up in a decent spot. So I would think Southampton, they're another average team, but I think they are on the down at the moment, especially after Coburn left the club. So you know what, I'm, I'm going to have to go with Southampton to go with 11th. Rolling guys, next up we are going to be going from spots 10 to 7. Now in 10th, they've gone with Leicester City. They've started off the season really, really badly. I spoke about our Hull beat them earlier. That's not a good start at all. I mean, the club that everyone thought would be finishing 20th goes and beat the Premier League champions. I think they're going to have kind of like a Chelsea season and actually finish in the spot that Chelsea did last year, which is indeed 10. Very disappointing for us. It could end up being very disappointing for Leicester. After they lost Kante, they've really gone the down. Now in ninth, we go for Stoke City. I mean, I'm sorry about Stoke. They just seem to finish ninth every year. They're such a consistent BPL side. But if you look about it, they should go further than this. They should be challenging for those Europa League spots. They always seem to get in around 10th, 9th, 11th. They need to push on. They have some quality players. Juve, Boyan, Shakiri. Like, Shakiri. That's a quality player that used to play for Bayern Munich. Arnautovic knocks in goal all the time. They have to find more form than what they're doing at the moment. They get too many draws, too many average results. And at the moment, they're in a bit of a stalemate with their club. In 8th, we've got Everton. Everton are a team who I reckon who could hold on to Romelu Lukaku and can actually do great things in the future. Now, if they do hold on to Lukaku, who knows? They could really go into Europa League spots because he can knock in goals from all angles. He's a very inconsistent striker, but I mean, he just gets too many goals to turn him down. I mean, if Everton can keep hold of him, like Everton, the amount of clubs I would have wanted this guy, Chelsea won him back for like ridiculous prices. I don't want to pay that much for him, but still, he is at the moment in the transfer market this high up in price. I mean, he's so high up, like 75 million. It's getting ridiculous. They also have some top, top quality players, Morales, Naismith can get a goal here and there. I'm pretty sure it's actually Norwich now, actually, so maybe not Naismith. But they have got a few other little tiny players who I think can pick up over 10 a few results. So eighth is not a bad spot for them, considering they had a pretty poor season last year. And with Ronald Koeman as a the manager, they're on the up. The win seventh, we've gone for West Ham, and West Ham are a team who I mean, I thought they'd be doing fantastic this season, but they are going down. I mean, I'm... They just went out of the Europa League and like they're not even into the group stages yet. They went out and qualified for the same team they did the year before. So West Ham are a club that have a lot of fixtures and a lot of injuries. But I think with time they can improve that once they got everyone fully fit. Carroll getting back in there and Valencia. They can go up to like the spots like 7th as I put them. I think 7th is a good spot for West Ham. It's not Europa League. But you know what? It is a still a very decent spot for them. And they wouldn't mind it at all. Now in 6th and 5th we have got Tottenham in 6th to begin with. Now Tottenham are a team who actually last year finished third on the last match day. Probably should have finished second, but they didn't need to finish third. And Tottenham now haven't made a lot of signings. Who have they signed? Victor Wanyama. That's it. I mean, that's not good enough from them. Yes, they have Harry Kane. Yes, they have Eriksen. And they probably don't want to kick out any of these players that did so well for them last year. You don't have to kick them out. Just build nice backup. I mean, ugh, there isn't really a player in this Spurs team that you think, I want him out. Because they all played really consistently last year. But there still needs to be more improvements than just getting in Victor Wanyama. It's not good enough for me. Now in fifth, I've actually gone for Liverpool. Liverpool are a very odd team. They're very strange. They haven't won trophies in God knows how many years. But, I don't know. Under Jurgen Klopp, they can all of a sudden just beat Barcelona and bloody Arsenal, scoring four goals against each of them. And then they go and lose to Burnley. So this is where Liverpool comes in. They're such a strange team. Because of how many wins they get against the big teams, I'm going to have to put them in 5th, which is much better than the, what they got last year. What did they get, like 8th or ninth? So, for them to finish 5th, I think it would be very good to get them in the Europa League again. So, yeah, I think Liverpool in 5th is not a bad spot at all for them. You know, they will, they will take it, I reckon. With the squad they have, it's not as developed as some of the top 4 teams like Man City and Man U. So, I think they'll take 5th, and 5th is a good spot for them. Now, in 4th, we have gone for Arsenal. Arsenal are a team... They don't make signings. They literally don't make signings. They made Jürgen Xhaka and they've stopped there. 
where they're going to go on to sign Lucas Perez and Scodra Mustafi. I think those will be two epic signings for Arsenal. I really do. They'd be so, so tired if their teams were sort in there. But, you know, they might not make them. Who knows? Another club might pull through. We'll just have to wait and see how many signings they make. Because I think that will depend on their spot. But, again, they always seem to, they always seem to claw through. And in a, in a BPL full of so much money spending... I mean, at Crystal Palace are spending at 35 minutes at the moment. It's actually ridiculous. So I think Arsenal would still just get that four spot and just find Nick in the Champions League qualifying. Now in third, I'm going to have to go with my boys, Chelsea. Chelsea have started off the league with two wins. Hopefully they got three against Burnley. We'll have to wait and see about that one. But Chelsea, I mean, they got Antonio Conte. They got Bashuai. They've got Kante. They signed Eduardo the goalie, which is not really a big signing. But I mean, Kante... What a big signing that is. Batshuayi has already got three goals in like 100 minutes. So this guy's knocking in goals. With Costa on form, we look brilliant. With Hazard running as he is, we could do fantastic things. The whole squad is so fantastically drilled. What I'm worried about Chelsea is defensively. And now Conte is such a good winner. We win every game by like one goal. But it's just a win. I mean, we literally, we just beat Grosser over 3-2. It still goes down on the, on the, like, the score sheet. It's a win. So like at the end of the day, I don't care what the result is. Conte is not... I always thought he was a man for, like, clean sheets, but at Chelsea, we tend to concede a fucking lot of goals, like, more than we do with Mourinho, but who knows, we'll have to wait and see what happens with Conte and Chelsea in the future, I think third is a very, very good position for us, we we finished 10th last year, and also the there's teams like Man City and Man U nicking in there ahead of us, spending, like, hundreds of millions of pounds, so third is not a bad spot. Now, in the second, I've gone for Manchester United, now, that may just surprise a few. Manchester United in the second, they've got Mourinho, they've got Ibra, they've got Zlatan, did I just say Ibra and Saturn? I think I did. They've got Ibra, they've got Pogba, they've got Mkhitaryan, and they've got Eric Bailey. I mean, that's as good as signings get. I'm sorry, it just is. They cannot stop spending money this club. I mean, and some of the signings they're making, they're too top quality for a lot of BPL clubs to turn down. But Mourinho never really does seem to win in his first season at clubs. And man, you may just slip halfway through the season. We'll have to wait and see whether they do or not. But who knows, they may actually end up doing it. And it wouldn't be bad at all. So that leads us on to our next team, and that is Manchester City, who are going to be finishing first. Now, Manchester City are another club who have made a ridiculous amount of signings. Gundogan, they just signed Bravo, Leroy Sane. I could go on with this list. I mean, they're too, there's too many good players in there. And Guardiola is the manager, and Aguero is scoring goals. David, David Silva assisting with De Bruyne behind him. That is too stacked. Company and Otamendi in defence. I mean, it, it's honestly too much for me to take in. They have too many world-class players. They've signed John Stones, like one of the best young centre-backs. They will not stop making top quality signings. And also, they have the manager and the philosophy to do it. They have very brilliant players to back up anyone that gets injured. Like, if Silva gets injured, I don't worry. We'll bring in Navas. We'll bring in Gundogan. We'll bring in Fernandinho, Torre, Fernando. They won't stop with absolutely world-class players in literally every single position. So I think Man City are going to come top of the league. Man U just behind them. Probably about like two or three points, probably. Like, just... By a win, I reckon Guardiola would just want Nico over Mourinho this year. So then my friends, those are my Premier League results. I've topped Man City to come first, and I'm also thinking of Bournemouth and also Burnley and also who's the, who's the last one? Oh, Sunderland. I also think those three are gonna go down. So I have to wait and see what happens there. But now what I'm gonna do is talk about who I'm gonna who I think is gonna win the other four top leagues in Europe. So let's go on to it. Now in Germany it's gonna be only one answer for me, Bayern Munich. Dortmund do have a decent chance there, but now that they've lost Hummels, I think their defence is too weak. Yes, they made good attacking options with Schurder and Goetzer, but Bayern are too strong with Lewandowski, Barteng, Hummels. The list goes on. Now in Serie A, I'm going to have to go with Juventus again. I cannot see anyone else beating them to it. They've made a record like paying signing of Higuain for like 90 million. People say on oh, how he's going fat. That guy scores goals for a living. It's too much to take in. Imagine him and Dybala up front. Argentinian strike force for days. There's not enough good teams in Italy to compete with Juve at the moment, so it looks like they're going to win it for literally, like, how many straight years? It's too many to count. In Liga, it's going to be the same story again with PSG. Yes, they lost Ibra. Cavani can easily do the job there. And they've got epic new signings like Ben Arthur, Grichawi, and Munia. They're very good players. So I think PSG will again nick Liga and buy a very large amount. And then finally in La Liga, probably the next closest um, league in Europe um, to, the league, to the BPN actually that's actually good and competitive because there's three teams who can easily win it every year Barca, Atletico and Real I'm going to have to go with Barca again I tip them every year I think any team with Messi's for us name one deserves to win the league and not only deserves it but will get it Real haven't made enough quality signings yes they brought Morata back yes they brought Asensio back 
but they're not like they're not Andre Gomes, they're not Umtiti, I think it's a fantastic signing by the way. So I think Barcelona will win La Liga yet again, and I hope they do. But yeah guys, that is indeed gonna be the end of this video. If you enjoyed it then leave a like on it. Make sure to leave in the comment section down below who you think is going to win the BPN and also the top four domestic leagues in Europe. But for now, it has been a good one for my first video back from a holiday. Peace out.